Now that we have seen how to use integration by parts to evaluate indefinite integrals, we're going to take a look at the counterpart for definite integrals. And the way to obtain this counterpart is, of course, through the fundamental theorem of calculus. What we have seen before is really that if we want to find an antiderivative of a function that we can interpret as a product of a function u with a derivative dv of another function v, then uh, we can obtain this antiderivative by taking the product of the functions u and v minus the, an antiderivative of v multiplied by the derivative of u. So that means that if I want to calculate the definite integral between a and b of a function that I can interpret similarly as a product of a function u with a derivative dv of another function v, then according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, if that function u dv is um, continuous on the interval a b, all I need is find an antiderivative of the function on the interval and evaluate between a and b. But such an antiderivative is really just the indefinite integral of u dv, and we know that we can obtain it under this form according to the integration by parts formula that we have seen for indefinite integrals. And then we just plug in the values. Um, we evaluate this function between a and b, which corresponds to evaluating the product uv between a and b. And then um, when we evaluate the integral of vdu between a and b, it's really just a definite integral from a to b of the function vdu. And therefore we obtain uh, the natural counterpart of the integration by parts formula for definite integrals, um, which is just evaluating between a and b every term in the uh, formula for indefinite integrals. So let's take a look at uh, some examples of applications where we're going to evaluate definite integrals using this integration by parts formula. We're going to go over these three examples, starting with the integral from 0 to 1 of the product of x squared plus 1 with e to the negative x. So as usual, when we're using integration by parts, we have to pick what is going to be interpreted as u, and we're going to have to differentiate this part, and what is going to be interpreted as dv, and we're going to have to integrate this part. Here the exponential, e to the negative x, whether we differentiate or integrate, we do not change the complexity, while for x squared plus 1, uh, we get the linear function 2x if we differentiate, we get a cubic function if we integrate. Therefore, uh, it seems natural to pick uh, x squared plus 1 for u, because this is the part we're going to differentiate, and e to the negative x for e to the negative x dx for dv. So that means that du is 2x dx, and an antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x, so that's v. And now we just plug things in our formula, and we obtain that uh, the integral is going to be equal to the function uv, which is negative x squared plus 1 times e to the negative x, that we're going to evaluate between 0 and 1 minus the integral of vdu, since vdu is negative 2x e to the negative x, we obtain plus integral from 0 to 1 of 2x e to the negative x. If I evaluate between 0 and 1 the first term, the value at 1 is negative 2 e to the negative 1, the value at 0 is negative 1, but since I'm subtracting the value at 0, I get negative 2 e to the negative 1 plus 1. And to that, we have to add the integral from 0 to 1 of 2x e to the negative x. This letter integral can be evaluated by parts uh, because we have a polynomial times an exponential, and this is a typical situation uh, to calculate an integral by parts. And as in the previous case, we're going to differentiate x and integrate e to the negative x. Again, because if I differentiate x, I simplify it. I'm going to get a constant. If I was to integrate it, I would get um, a quadratic function, uh, which, of course, would take me back to where I was. 
So we differentiate x, we integrate e to the negative x. We obtain dx for du, negative e to the negative x for v. And we plug things in again. So we have two times um, the function uv evaluated between 0 and 1. And that's negative x e to the negative x. Minus the integral of v du. And that's, uh, in this case, integral of negative e to the negative x dx. So because I subtract it, I obtain plus integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative x. And an entire derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. So we obtain um, this uh, 1 minus 2 e to the negative 1 that um, was the value of the first bracket at the beginning of this calculation plus uh, the function negative 2e to the negative x times x plus 1 evaluated between 0 and 1. When we plug 1 in this, uh, we obtain negative 4e to the negative x. When we plug 0 in this, uh, we get negative 2, which uh, we subtract, so we get positive 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, so we have 3 minus 2e to the negative 1 minus 4 e to the negative 1. That sums up to 3 minus 6 e to the negative 1. Moving on to the next example, we're looking at the integral from 1 to 4 of root t ln of t. Again, if we're going to proceed by parts, uh, we have to decide what we're going to differentiate, what we're going to integrate. In this case, we don't have much of a choice because for the natural log, we know the derivative. Um, we don't. Um, we are not expected to memorize the entire derivative. So naturally, we are going to pick u equal natural log of t. And for dv, what remains, which is root t dt. That means that du is the derivative of ln of t. It's dt over t. While an entire derivative of root t, root t is t to the 1 half, so an entire derivative is t to the 3 half over 3 half, in other words, 2 third t to the 3 half. If we plug things in in our integration by parts formula, we obtain that our integral is um, equal to evaluating the function uv, which is 2 third t to the 3 half ln of t between 1 and 4 minus the integral of the product v du uh, from 1 to 4. v is 2 third t to the 3 half, du is 1 over t. So we get this product t to the 3 half over t, which is t to the 1 half. And if we plug the value 4 uh, in the function 2 third t to the 3 half ln of t, 4 to the 3 half, that's 4 to the 1 half is 2, cubed is 8, times 2 thirds is 16 thirds, so we have 16 thirds ln of 4, minus the value at 1, which is 0, because ln of 1 is 0. And then we have this minus 2 thirds of the integral of t to the 1 half, and to obtain this integral, we just need an entire derivative, and as we have seen before, entire derivative of t to the 1 half is 2 thirds t to the 3 half. So we obtain 16 third ln of 4 minus 2 third times 2 third, that's 4 ninth, times t to the 3 half evaluated between 1 and 4. And 4 to the 3 half is 8, 1 to the 3 half is 1, so we obtain minus 4 ninth of 7, in other words, 29, 28 ninth. Now for um, the last example. Integral from 0 to 1 of x5 to the x dx. Again, we have to pick what is going to be differentiated, what we are going to interpret as u, what is going to be integrated, what we interpret as dv. So we have here a polynomial times an exponential. 5 to the x is an exponential function, so whether we differentiate or integrate, we get another exponential function. For x, if we integrate, we get a quadratic function. If we differentiate, we get a constant. So clearly we get something simpler if we differentiate. So we're going to take u equal x and dv is 5 to the x dx. In that case, du is simply dx and an entire derivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x over ln of 5. If we plug everything in, 
we obtain for our definite integral um, the value that we obtain by evaluating the function uv which is x times 5 to the x over ln of 5 between 0 and 1 minus the integral from 0 to 1 of v du which in this case is simply 5 to the x over ln of 5 dx an antiderivative of 5 to the x is 5 to the x over ln of 5 so an antiderivative of 5 to the x over ln of 5 is 5 to the x over ln of 5 squared and therefore we obtain uh, for, an, for the value of the integral um, the value of the function 5 to the x over ln of 5 squared evaluated between 0 and 1 the first bracket when we plug the value 1 um, we obtain 5 over ln of 5 and the value at 0 is 0 because we multiply by x now for the second bracket when I plug x equal 1 I get 5 over ln of 5 squared when we plug the value 0 we get 5 to the 0 which is 1 so we're going to um, to have 1 over ln of 5 squared in other words uh, what we obtain is 5 over ln of 5 minus 5 over ln of 5 squared plus 1 over ln of 5 squared so we obtain minus 4 ln of 5 squared now turn to the next video to see more examples